hey guys and welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to be talking about the case of yori areas and what really happened so let's just go ahead and get into this case so in june of 2008 mimi hall was very excited because she was going on this trip to new mexico the only problem was that her friend travis who she was supposed to go on this trip was nowhere to be found so she started reaching out to like friends and family because of course she was worried and nobody else knew anything about him um so because he was a businessman and very active in his church community, she knew that it wasn't like him to just disappear. <clears throat> so she decides to go over to his place to figure out what was really happening and to see if he was there. So she gets concerned and she calls a friend over and her, the friend comes with her boyfriend as well. They start calling another friend because nobody's answering the door to see if that friend knew the code to his place. So once that friend gave them the code, they went inside the house through the garage. Once they were inside the place, they start knocking on his roommate door and he says that he thought that Travis was on a trip. Until so he starts looking into his room and he finds a spare key to, his, to Travis' room. Um, and then he proceeds to go ahead and go inside the room where he finds Travis is dead. When the police arrived into his room, everything seemed like squeaky clean. Everything was in place and organized, but as they come closer to the body, they could tell that it had been there for some time because his fingers were like a little bit dark. There was also blood everywhere. Bullets were found at the scene. It looked as if someone was trying to maybe clean it off and the bedding was also removed. There was no sign of forced entry whatsoever which made it look like an inside job. So they find this camera inside the laundry machine and the first goal becomes to recover whatever what was in there to see if there was maybe anything related to Travis's murder. Um, it is said that Travis didn't have an easy life as a kid. Um, his parents had a really bad drug abuse and it wasn't until he moved with his grandmother that he became a warm one and his life completely changed. He was kind of living a double life as so many girls liked him, but because of his religion, he was not supposed to have sex with anyone he wasn't married to. And one of those many girls that liked him was Jodi Arias. Now, what's interesting about this is that Jodi Arias called herself to the police department, claiming that she was just very upset that her friend was gone. And she just wanted to see if she could be of any help. So she started giving out details of the relationship. The detectives start collecting DNA and asking in his friend group to see if they could possibly think of anyone who would want to murder Travis. They said, yes, Jody Area. Jody and Travis met back in 2006 when she decided to join the company that he was working for. The main reason they met was because the company that Travis used to work for would do these events where they would usually give an extra ticket and people would usually take their spouses, girlfriends, close friends, etc. So Travis had an extra ticket and their friends set him up with this girl that they thought was beautiful and was actually wanting to join the company so they set him up on a blind date. Despite having a boyfriend, she falls in love with Travis. The only issue was that she was not a Mormon, so after two months, she decides to do a ceremony and become a Mormon as well. Now, she probably didn't realize that she was maybe becoming less of white material in the eyes of the Mormons because they were already having sex before marriage. But their relationship ended, and Jody decides to move closer to Travis, which is a little bit strange because if you are breaking up a relationship, you probably want to move further away from your ex not closer but after a while she says that she felt like he was seeing many women besides sleeping with her and so she decides to move again she was going on a work trip and to meet up with this guy um that she actually had a romantic interest in she said it was weird to see jody because she had cuts in her fingers and she had changed her hair color and she said that it was from bartending so nothing would place her at the crime scene. After a few days, the police department was actually able to recover the pictures from the camera and all of the evidence pointed directly to Julie Arias. 
So she gets interrogated and she's explaining all her routes until they explain to her that she still had an 18 odd hours where she could have actually killed Travis. Her blood, her fingerprints, and her hair was found at the scene. But she had an answer for everything. But there was actually a picture of her naked and pictures even after the murder where you could see her pants. So she's arrested for the murder of Travis Alexander. But it was very... But in my opinion, the weirdest part was that she did not seem concerned at all of being charged with murder. The way she acted after she was being interrogated was just very strange in my opinion like she was doing handstands in there and just chilling jody was a very tough egg to crack she completely denied everything she was not good at communicating with women so the detective tried to change the strategy and i started asking questions as to why she was there and if travis knew that she was coming and she starts confessing that she got there at 3 a.m and claimed that there was a guy and a woman that walked in on them and killed Travis. Talking to her parents, you can say that Yodi grew up in a very middle class, normal household. Her relationship with her sibling was good, but not as much with her parents. Yodi's relationship with her parents got worse after they found her growing marijuana and they called the cops and she decided to hide everything from them. And years after she moved out, her parents said that she actually moved out on her junior year because of her curfew. So after the murder of Travis, she went to her parents and she said that she had to leave because she was going to be blamed for something and it was something very bad, but she couldn't say what. So after two days interrogating Jody, she starts telling the story about how she struggled to get out of the house, claiming that people were there to hurt him and she thought she was gonna be next so she ran into her car as fast as she could but obviously her story doesn't add up but convic convicting her of first degree murder was not gonna be easy obviously it did not take her long to captivate the nation's attention because of course she was a beautiful young female arrested for first degree murder which could possibly put her a death penalty she was going on TV and she finally got an attorney who she was calling every day, which is very odd and unusual, said by himself. She even asked him to please look after her cat. He knew her story wasn't adding up as much as he would want to, to make her case. And that's when she started accusing Travis of being violent and abusive and even accused him of being a pedophile. In June of 2010, she completely changed her story. She said that she was actually there and in fact she did kill Travis but it was all in self-defense. In 2013 the trial starts and so Yodi starts to explain all the abuse that she suffered with him and details of their relationship that were shocking to the Mormon community and to her, his friends. And of course shocking to his friends and family who were people that were actually in his life for a really long time. Um, after this horrible accusation, it was hard to try to rebuild Travis's reputation. So they called Mimi to the stand to interrogate her about her relationship with Travis, in which she said at the most he hugged her and she felt very safe with him. He also revealed that Travis had said to her that he had a female stalker and in fact he got his tires slashed, he had broken emails. In bank the person accounts. that did his autopsy relieved that in fact there have been marks on Travis that could have been from defensive wounds. It came to surface that Yodi had actually robbed her grandparents one week before Travis was killed and her grandfather had the same caliber bullet as the one that was found in Travis's bathroom. Yodi actually the night of Travis's murder stopped by her ex's house and asked for two gas cans for her to take on her trip and so they believed that she did that so there wouldn't be any evidence of her possibly stopping in Arizona. After showing basically a sex tape of them, it kind of backed up her story about he, how he mistreated her and she started giving out details of the murder and she said that she had blacked out during it and she just remembers shooting him in self-defense and 
she doesn't remember anything else after that. Now, it was kind of hard to understand what was going through Jody's head and understand it, whether she was lying or not. And that was because that was already the third time that she had changed her story from not being there to there were people there. So she did it in self-defense, so he attacked her, so he was abusive. It was just so much to even like know whether she was lying or not. To make it even worse, she said that their relationship was so abusive that he broke one of her fingers in her hands. And then the defense found pictures of her having that finger broken even before the time that she claims that it was him that broke it. Um, so she was actually found guilty and then it was just to decide whether she was going to receive the death penalty or not. Now it is very ironic how she loved the media and the attention that she was getting from it. After she was found guilty, she gave an interview saying that death was the ultimate freedom. Meaning like she didn't care whether she was going to die or not. Um, she actually was given first degree murder, life in prison without parole. And she is currently serving time in Goodyear, Arizona at the moment. But even to this day after a decade and after so much time has passed since Travis's death, it's hard to understand whether she actually had previous intentions of killing him, whether she had planned it, whether it was actually just the heat of the moment like she claimed, whether she actually blacked out. It's hard to understand how you would stab someone so many times and did all the stuff that she did to him and I guess that's just something it's gonna she's gonna take with her um, but even some of her former cellmates uh, said that she was a sociopath and that she's actually crazy and there's something not okay with her and clearly that's obvious because she just loved the attention that she got from this case and because of all the times that she lied in Travis's name and stuff like that all right you guys so that is it for today thank you so much for watching i hope you guys are staying safe during these hard times bye